With Amiga Ireland just around the corner, I'm trying to get all my machines set up and ready to go. But how can I possibly go the whole way down to Athlone without my TF1260? If you remember back a few weeks ago, I was working on a shorted Amiga 1200. And towards the end of that video, I tried to test that board with this accelerator. That motherboard didn't have a chamfered edge connector. And unfortunately, it damaged my edge connector here on the 1260. It is really hard to get a shot of this on the camera, but you can see just in there, several of the pins have been pushed flat against the back wall of this slot. And there's another one there as well. So I don't think there's going to be any way to repair that in there. Rather, I think the easiest thing to do and I do say that with a pinch of salt, the easiest thing to do will be to just replace that edge connector. I do have a replacement here. I do need to say a bit of a shout out to Mark Brown, AKA Super Duper. He did offer to send me one of these, but by the time I seen that offer from him, I had already purchased this. Still very nice of him to offer to do that. So I have to give Mark a shout out for that. But how are we going to get this off? I have a couple of ideas. It really is going to be either hot air or the Moo gun. I think we will start with the latter. We'll start with this thing. I put a new tip in it, cleaned it all out, even put a new filter in it. This hasn't been working great lately, but hopefully the new tip will sort it out. Ready to go. I don't think there's any particularly large traces on here, so hopefully this comes out okay. This was only built at Amiga Ireland last year. So the solder on here isn't that old and it's all leaded solder that I would normally use. And certainly it's cleared that one okay. Will it clear the rest? Yeah, it seems to be working okay. I have an awful lot of pins to desolder. I typically run this uh, desoldering station at 400 degrees. Which granted is quite a bit, especially for that leaded solder, but I find it does just help to clear the holes. Well, it did its best, but there are still quite a few that are not unblocked. And the easiest way to tell really is just by looking at them. Any of the pins that still look silver around them, well, there's still solder in those holes. The only way to deal with that really is to put some fresh solder on those pins. Those ones that still look like they have some solder around them. And then try to desolder again. We're going to just hold the heat on these for a bit longer. Presumably there must be a big internal ground or power plane. Yeah, got that one this time. I'll be the one beside it. And yeah, I think it's cleared that one as well. Okay, I think that is all of them. So let's just grab this and give it a wiggle. Yeah, not yet, it's not. So the next job is going to be going around with the tweezers and checking every pin individually to see which is still stuck. That one, for example, that first one I went to, that's still stuck. And so is that one. Oh no. If a pin is free, it should just bounce. And unfortunately, it seems as if quite a few of these are still not there. So I'm just going to have to go around, check every one of these, apply some more solder to them, and then try desoldering again. The only other option is the hot air, but I'd rather not resort to that. I knew this was going to be tricky. All of them in that row, except that one. They're all still stuck tight. It may be a case I need to turn the temperature on the desoldering station up a bit. 
We'll give it another 20 degrees and then we'll try this again. Okay, is that it's finally free. Let's try and give it another wiggle. Uh, ooh, maybe. Is that it? Come on. And there it is. That took an awful lot of work. But it's finally off. Although before we can go ahead and put that one on, we do need to clean this a bit. But I can turn off the desoldering gun, get rid of that terrible noise. So I'm just going to put a bit of flux down on this. Then with some desoldering braid, I'm just going to go over all this and try to mop up any little loose bits of solder or any bits that were left over in any of the holes. So just clean up them with a bit of IPA and cotton bud, then we'll fit that. So can we get this in? I'll just inspect and make sure all of those pins have come through the holes. There's nothing bent. And no, I don't think there is. Just checking to be sure that it is sitting flat against the board. The profile of this means that that bit of the edge connector there, it doesn't actually sit flat against the board. The back bit here does, where the pins go through. But this bit here sort of chamfers down a wee bit. But I think that's it sitting correctly. So we'll just do a couple of pins at either end. Then we'll just inspect it again to be sure. And yeah, it's all looking pretty good. I'll do all the rest of these and then we can test it. I hope this still works. So just before we do test this, Let's just make sure the 1200 is working okay. I'm sure it is, but always worth checking these things. I took the lid off it here just to make accessing everything a bit easier. And yeah, I think it is booting. Yeah, that is all fine. So we'll get the 1230 out. This has to be the fussiest accelerator I have ever had. Whether it's this edge connector or this on the 1200, but this thing needs to be set at just one very particular point or it will not work. So if this doesn't work first time, it may just be a case that it needs tweaked a little bit, but let's see how it goes. Typically I find it does need pulled back just a little bit. Will it work? Nope, it's not booting. But as I say, it might just be a case that this needs adjusted a little bit. So let me have a fiddle with it here. What was that? I've never seen it do that before. I thought about booting that time. The floppy drive made one click, but maybe this time. Oh, I think it's working this time. Is it? Yeah, it's booting. Fantastic. 1260 back up and running. Let's just confirm that in sysinfo. And yeah, there it is. CPU 68060. Run a quick speed test. This will just be at its stock 50 megahertz. And yeah, that is all good. So TF1260, back up and running, fantastic stuff. I have a little bit of work to do to this 1200 for Amiga Ireland. Just want to tidy up Workbench, some new software that I want to install on it. But I don't need to bore you lot with that right now. The purpose of this mini repair video was to get this accelerator up and running again. I don't dare let go of it here or the Amiga is likely to crash. 
I think maybe my edge connector on the 1200 just needs a clean. So I'll do that as well. But that's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Told you of a crash. <laughs>